Welcome to New Sunny Mount Missionary Baptist Church. We are delighted to have you join us today as we commemorate the powerful outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon all who have joined us. Meet our prayer warriors every Tuesday at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Our prayer line is a place where you can join with others in moments of communal prayer. Together, we can create a tapestry of prayers that transcends boundaries and nurtures our spiritual bonds. We invite you to join our uplifting and enlightening Wednesday Bible study sessions. Whether you're a seasoned Bible scholar or new to studying the Word, there's a place for you each evening via Zoom at 12 noon and 6 p.m. We extend a heartfelt invitation for you to join in fellowship with us. Email us at salvation at nsmbcstl.com or text NSMJOIN to the number 84576. If you are a first-time guest, text NSM Guest to the number 84576. For more information on these exciting opportunities and to stay updated with all of our events and weekly announcements, visit our website or sign up to receive our weekly flock note. great city of St. Louis, Missouri, you are always welcome at the new Sunny Mount Missionary Baptist Church, where the Reverend Brandon A. Blake is our anointed teacher and pastor. As we pursue excellence in ministry, we will exalt his holy name, we will equip the saints, and we will evangelize the word of God. You can expect a Christophany, a mighty move of God in this place. So welcome my brothers and sisters into the sanctuary of the new Sunny Mount Missionary Baptist Church for God will move in this place.
Lord, everybody. Come on, let's clap our hands and reverence the King, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We've come for no other reason but to lift up his name and to give him glory. The Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with a praise. Did anybody come with a hallelujah in their spirit? Did anybody come with a thank you, Jesus, in their spirit, a glory to God? Let glory fill the room right now. Come on, don't stop your worship. Come on, don't stop. Hallelujah. He's good. Worthy to be praised. Stand with us as we sing our hymn of praise this morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Anybody know he's great out there? Morning by morning, new mercies we see. Hallelujah. Here we go. Great, great is thy faithfulness. Oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not, thou changest not thy compassions. And winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses, in their join with all nature, join with all nature in manifold with to thine great faithful. To thy great faithfulness, mercies and love. Chorus, great is thy, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy, morning by morning, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, all I Hallelujah. That's good news. Great is, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that
Come on, clap your hands if you know the Lord is faithful. Thank you, Lord. We praise you today for your faithfulness. We want you to come into this place, God. Song says, arise. Lord, you're good. We want you to take your place right here. The throne of our heart. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. 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 Your kingdom be established. Let your kingdom be established. Oh, ancient of days. You are good. And your mercy endures forever. Come on, clap your hands like this. All right. Come on and take your place. God, we enthrone you with your worship, and we've come to glorify your name, because you are good, and your mercy endures forever. Oh, God. 
the king. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you forever and ever. Forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works and I will proclaim your great deeds. Please bow your head for prayer. Dear Lord, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We are grateful for the many blessings you have given us. Thank you for all that is good in our lives. And we ask that you would help us to be thankful and to share your love with others. We ask that you bless us with your grace and protection through these coming days. Help us to be mindful of the needs of others so that we may serve them as you will serve us. We pray for those who are struggling today and that their needs are heavy on your heart. We pray that they would find healing in your love and that they will know your peace this day. We thank you for this day and the peace it brings. We pray for those who are struggling in need of your comfort. We ask that you bring healing to those who are sick and to those who have lost loved ones. We also pray for those who have passed away recently. May they feel your presence as they rest in heaven with you. And may their families find comfort in knowing that they are loved by God and by all of us here on earth. 
We also pray for our young people today. Bless them with your guiding grace as they face the challenges and opportunities in their lives. Touch their hearts with the gentleness of your love that they may know they are valued and valuable beings. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. I mean, you know the victory belongs to Jesus. No one else deserves it. Raise that up all over the room. Just a sound of worship. Let the Lord know how much you love him. How much you adore him. Say something sweet to him. Come on, let worship fill the room. Thank you, Jesus. We honor your name, God.
Please, one more time. say that. the victory belongs to him and since we believe in him we have that victory amen ain't it good to know he wrought the victory through his blood you can shout hallelujah let's pray church father God in the name of Jesus thank you so much once again you have allowed us to assemble here in your house of worship God, we come with a contrite and humble heart this morning, asking God that you look beyond our faults one more time because you see our needs, God. We thank you for giving us the victory over sin, God. Thank you this morning, God, that we can come before your throne of grace without condemnation, God, because there are some that have come, God, that feel helpless and hopeless this morning. There are some that have come that are in a difficult situation, God. There are some that have family issues and monetary issues and health issues, oh God, that we're having trouble with our minds, God. But oh God, the victory is ours. And we come today to claim our victory through prayer. We come today, God, saying thank you for holding us and not letting us go, God. Thank you that nobody can pluck us out of your hand. Thank you that we are safe, Lord God, in the arms of Jesus. God, we're most grateful and we've already offered your praise and thanksgiving, God. So we're just here to make a petition before your throne of grace. We're bowing on our knees, our faces, God. Our spirits are turned towards you, God, saying, help, God. We, we need your help today. And we know that you're the only one that can help us, God. So we come in full assurance. We come, God, even saying if our faith is weak, we say help our unbelief this morning. Help us, Lord, to reach back and see those victories you've already given us, Lord. And to declare that you have all power in heaven and earth in your hands. And with you, nothing is impossible. So today, God, we're going to walk in that truth. We're going to stand in our faith, God. We're going to declare that you are God and you're more than the world against us. We thank you, God, because you are worthy of praise because you kept us through that storm last night, God. You kept us through the heartaches that we've been through, God. You kept us from wars and rumors of wars, God, where our enemies come in and take over our land. God, you didn't let it happen. So we say thank you. You kept the deaf angel away from our families, God. We got up this morning, God. Oh, thank you. We got up this morning. So I'm asking you to just touch today. 
I'm asking you to touch every heart, touch every situation, touch every want and desire, touch every regret, God, in the name of Jesus. And as always, God, help us to send the word to those that don't know you. God, on all we can pray for, we need to pray for those that are on the outskirts of salvation. Those that are out of the realm of safety, God, because you've made a way for them also. So we're calling them in to the kingdom today, God. We don't need another fur coat or another rich car, another house. We need souls to be saved today, God, in the name of Jesus. We want you to call our children into the kingdom. Our families, reclaim them back, God. And we promise we will tell somebody that you alone, whose name is Jehovah, art God over the whole earth. This I pray in Jesus' mighty name. We say thank you, oh God, and amen.
give God some praise in the room on today. Come on, let's give God some praise. I think we can do just a tad bit better than that for the God who has been so good to us. Amen. We're grateful that God has extended life for us, blessed us with this opportunity to gather in his name to give God praise, amen. I was just whispering to Dr. Pendleton that um, there are some of our sister churches um, who do not have power today. And uh, the Lord blessed us to have power. And since we have it, we might as well give them praise. We might as well give them praise. Pastor Keith Pendleton, the pastor of the True Light Church, is no stranger to us. He is our preacher on today. Uh, certainly, I am honored uh, to have him call me pastor, amen, uh, of such prestige. Uh, God has blessed his ministry uh, for many years, and I've shared with you uh, often that he has been a Barnabas for me. Amen. Uh, and I'm grateful again for our relationship, and certainly I'm grateful that he is with us this morning. New Sunday Mount, will you put your hands together and praise God for the preacher for this particular moment in time, and our friend and brother, Pastor Keith Pendleton. Praise and gratitude to our Heavenly Father. We praise Him because He's worthy and gratitude because we thank Him. How wonderful the Lord is and how wonderful He is in this place and how wonderful He is in the life of every believer in Jesus Christ. To our pastor, my beloved a pastor, Dr. Brandon A. Blake, and his lovely wife, amen, Sister Kiana Blake. Let's show them wonderful love, amen. To all of our preachers who are here on the day, to our deacons, trustees, and all of our church officials, our mothers, deaconess, whatever capacity you serve in, to this wonderful, uh, music ministry that has blessed us to show them some love on today. Amen. On uh, was it last Sunday? One of our young people in the church. She during the period we have some time. The deacons ask, "Will folk have a testimony?" and uh, this young lady, she doesn't hardly say anything. Uh, she don't jump up and stand up when I'm preaching and she's not a shouter, but she got up and testified. She's uh, 11 going to the sixth grade and uh, she said her great grandmother had passed, Mother Sarah Robinson who was our oldest member of the church, and she got upset. She was thinking about her great grandmother, and she said she got on TikTok. And uh, she said she started scrolling through TikTok. She's saying she came up on a song, and they were started worshiping. She said, This is her language. And while they worshiped, she said, I worship and I was praising God and this is where she dumped the house for me. She said, 
and I can't hardly tell this because I get emotional, but she said, I felt the Holy Ghost. And I know they try to give social media a bad thing, a bad name, but I had to admit I'm on TikTok too. And I scroll through and I hear G.E. Patterson, I hear Tellus Chapman, I hear Terry Anderson, and I hear F.D. Sampson Sr. And boy, I start worshiping and praising God. And I feel the Holy Ghost too while I'm on TikTok. And what brought to me, I immediately, when it was time to get up after she spoke, I said, even me, Lord, even, even me, even me, I wish I was in the right church here right now. Let some drops, y'all gonna help me right through here, now fall. On, on me. Come on, help me. Even me, Lord, even, even me, even me, Lord, Let some drops, come on, help me. Let some drops, come on. Let some drops now fall on, on me. I know y'all didn't ask me to sing, and I ain't no real singer, but that just came up in my spirit again. Well, the Lord been good to us. Somebody in here don't have electricity at their home. But the church got electricity, and the church got power. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. St. John's Gospel, chapter 13, and verse 34 and 35. This is the new King James Version. And it says, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. 
and that you also love one another. And by this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Amen. That's the word of God. It's for the people of God. And his word is true and it can be trusted. I'm going to preach just for a few minutes. I'm not going to keep you long. Love one another. Love one. Love one another. Pastor Blake, Sister Blake, to New Sunny Mount congregation. We thank our ushers, of course, all for serving the church on today. Let us say amen. Uh, clearly, without question, any good parent or coach or manager or a leader or even pastor learns to capitalize on what's called teachable moments. Uh, and no one mastered this like Jesus. Uh, while preparing his disciples for his uh, departure and for his uh, imminent confrontation with the forces of evil, Jesus gives them some critical ministry insight and even imperative. His simple yet uh, salient, that's right, uh, salient, that's important, that principle, that major, that chief, that primary, that notable, that outstanding, that uh, striking, noticeable, obvious, remarkable, signal, prominent, pronounced, predominant, dominant, key, crucial, vital, essential, basic, staple, critical, pivotal, prime, central, focal, and paramount instruction is love one another as I have loved you. Biblical research will suggest uh, here that the weight of this command is found in the phrase, as I have loved you. Uh, this teachable moment uh, coupled with uh, the future of his church was too important for Christ to allow his disciples to interpret the meaning and measure of love. So what does he do? He defines it for them. As I have loved you. Our Lord implies uh, that the most convincing mark of true discipleship is to be observed by men is in our loving other believers as Christ loved his own disciples. Oh, brothers and sisters, you know it. They taught it. One of the first things we learned was Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so. Uh, little ones to him belongs that they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. I say yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me for the what? The Bible tells me so. But look, some of y'all in love situations that's one-sided. You love and it ain't getting nothing back. This ain't one-sided, pastor. Yes, Jesus loves me, but look, I flipped the script. Oh, how I love Jesus. Is anybody in here really? Come on. Look, we storm survivors. We ain't got to act this morning. You ain't got to be act bougie in here. The tree could have fell on your house. Tree could have fell on your car. Do I have a witness? Oh, tree could have fell on you. My God. But I love him today. And I thank him today for all that he's done. 
Look, just got these three important truths, these three truths. First of all, our love is to be intentional. That's right. Take notice of the insight uh, that John gives us in the first few verses of chapter 13. He was aware that uh, the discord caused by James and John's request, uh, that's right, to uh, hook him up. That's right. Uh, he wanted to hook them. He wanted, they wanted to say, look, when you get to your kingdom, hook us up. Look, give us one of the seats on the left. And, I look, and, and the Lord told him, that's not mine to give. Do I have a witness? Uh, that's right. We be requesting favors for the Lord. We requesting, that's right, favors for of the Lord. Lord, do this. And Lord, please. And Lord, this. And Lord, this. And Lord, please. And Lord, bless me and mine. Lord. Lord, 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 please, Lord, 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 and never do you ever tell him thank you. Look, I fell out the bed the other day. That's right. Ain't nobody in there with me. Didn't nobody push me. I said I fell out the bed. I was up about 5.15, it was on June the 15th. And uh, uh, June 15th, and uh, uh, I was, I guess, on the edge of the bed, obviously, on my right side, and the next thing I know, I'm on the floor. <laughs> Amen, I hit my knee on the concrete floor, and what broke my fall, was I fell forward, was that ottoman that I used to get up, and again, I get king size bed, and I don't sleep but on one side of it. Somebody said, I feel you, you know. <laughs> and uh, uh, I told the Lord, I said, Lord, now I know I, I opened my eyes. And when I came open to my eyes, I knew that, uh, I knew I told you, thank you. You ain't had to push me. <laughs> Look. Our love needs to be what? Intentional. Uh, he knew about the discord caused by James and John and the imminent the betrayal of Judas and the denials of Peter and the doubting of Thomas and the defection of the others, but he loved them. We also have to love Brother Blue in, uh, on purpose in spite of even in light of what we know others might do. You can't have that tit for tat kind of love. You love me, I love you. You speak to me, I speak to you. Look, you love even when they don't love you back. Speak even when they don't speak you back. We are believers in Christ. Uh, you know, I know we've su uh, 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 subscribed that we are Christians, uh, and that Christian term was really, if you look at it, is really a bullying term. They were making fun of them when they left Antioch, and they said, them Christians. But look, we are believers, and here it is, what do you believe? I believe that the Lord loves me, and I love him. What do you believe? I believe he's a on time God, Yes, he is. I believe he may not come when you want him to come, but he's always on time. I believe he pick you up and he'll turn you around and place your feet on solid ground. I believe he's a heart fixer and a mind regulator. What do you believe? I believe like our pastor said, he's all right. <laughs> so our love has got to be intentional. But secondly, let me get a little scholarly here. <laughs> our love is not only to be intentional, but our love is to be, watch this word, incessant. As in incessant, I-N-C-E-S-S-A-N-T. In, where if Carol feels in? There she is. <laughs> you know I wasn't gonna come here without my lesson, don't you? That's my teacher, amen. 
look, incessant. That's right. Yes, the word popped up in my synonym list too. And uh, it means without stopping. It means continually. You know, uh, you got to love that Karen that you run into. Huh? You, you, you've got to love those that do not love you. Look, you got to love them continually. Don't pause. That's right. Ceaseless, unceasing, constant, continual, uh, 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 endless, unending, never ending, everlasting, eternal, perpetual, continuous, nonstop, uninterrupted, unbroken, ongoing, uh, uh, persistent, relentless, unrelenting, unrelieved, sustained, unflagging, look, undying, recurrent. You got to love people not only intentionally, but incessantly. You got to keep on loving. Incessantly, you got to love people because you love me when they don't love you. You know they doing you harm. You know they don't want mean you no good. I don't care if they are your sorority sister or your fraternity brother. Some of them ain't no good either. See, I'm in a fraternity, but I was something before I got into the fraternity. The fraternity didn't make me better. I made it. Y'all like that. You got to love people through dissension and through deception. You got to love them through denial. You got to love them through the drowsiness. That's what he did. And the defection. You got to love when they leave you hanging all by yourself. You won't see who your friends are. Brother Blue, run out of gas and see who help you push. You can make your mouth say anything. You do know hallelujah is the highest praise. Hold up, pre hold up preacher. It's the highest verbal praise. But what's the highest praise? I'm glad you asked me. It's called obedience. Because you can make your mouth say anything. Come on, help me say hallelujah. Look at that. Now do what the Lord say do. That's obedience. Huh? Our love for each other likewise must rise above every offense, every obstacle, and every opposition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the SCOTUS, they thought they was doing something. Because uh, now they want to cancel out affirmative action. And, 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 and then two groups uh, say, oh, yeah, that's going to be good for us. Look, we are smart. We don't need affirmative action to help us get into Harvard. I don't want to embarrass my teacher, but she pushed in 11th grade when I had modern U.S. history. She said, if you believe in something, she said, fight for it. Huh? That's right. I believe you believe in something. That's right. Fight for it. How many uh, uh, our grandparents and sometimes parents had to work jobs so we could go to school, scrub floors, clean houses of other people, cook for them, nurse their children, do all of that so that you and I could do what? So that we could go to school. And look, they might cancel out affirmative action, but they can't, cannot cancel out the one who is over affirmative action. The one who will say yes when the world say no. Our love's got to be intentional. Our love's got to be incessant, but finally, I love has to be instructional. I said intentional, help me say intentional. I said incessant, help me say incessant. And I said instructional, help me say instructional. Uh, the focal phrase is, as I have loved you. Strongly suggests that loving like uh, 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 Jesus can be both caught and taught instructional. 
What is that saying? We are commanded to love each other. What is that saying? We are commanded in such a way that others can learn to love like Jesus. New Sunny Mount, really more members. They need some disciples. Some people who are ever learners. Uh, they learn, what are, what are ever learners? I'm glad you asked. They ever learners are people who learn some and then they learn some more. People who don't ever stop learning. Here people, the, the, the state congress and state conventions coming up. People, oh, I done had all them classes. Take them again. Refresh yourself. What do you do on computers when you want it to act right and won't act right? Refresh it. What do you do with these cell phones when they're like they get in the loop? Turn them off and let them what? Reboot or whatever. Look, sometime you got to in your learning to love people, it's got to be instructional. You got to learn how to be a what? A disciple of Jesus Christ. I tell you, that's right. Learn some and learn some more. Can I tell you what I learned, Pastor? I learned that God and women have something in common. I say God and women. Come on, men, y'all listen, I'm trying to help you out. <laughs> Dr. Thurman, yes, right. God and women. Mama Tina have something, Lady Kiana have something in common. Well, what is it, preacher? When they ask, you a question, they already <laughs> they already know the answer. Huh? Where you been? Uh, 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 they already know. They already know the answer. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach. I'm trying to help them. I'm trying to help the men today. Best thing, men, is just don't say nothing. Say, huh? <laughs> Mama Tina, if they say, huh, that mean they can hear, huh? <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm, God asked Adam, he said, where art thou? He wasn't asking Adam because he didn't know where he was. He was asking Adam because he wanted Adam's input. God asked Jeremiah, is there any word from the Lord? He wasn't asking Jeremiah, because he, he was asking Jeremiah, he didn't know the answer. He asked Jeremiah, I want to see what you have to say. Come here, I like Ezekiel. God asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? And watch it, watch it, Brother Fields. Ezekiel was a cool-headed uh, uh, person. He didn't jump and say, yes, Lord, trying to impress the Lord. Uh, he, 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 because if he had a said, yes, Lord, uh, the Lord would say, okay, you raise him. <laughs> he didn't say, no, Lord. Uh, he said, no. He said, Lord said, do you doubt my power? What did Ezekiel say? He said, Lord, you know. Somebody right here in a situation over in this section is in a situation that uh, uh, you don't know how to answer. I tell you what, take it and put it back on the Lord. Because somebody in the building here knows that he knows. Do I have a witness? So our love has got to be, yes, uh, intentional. Uh, our love has got to be incessant. Uh, and our love has got to be instructional. Uh, that's right. We need more disciples. Uh, but I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, uh, as I close, I, 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 I got to testify. Uh, on, uh, yes, March the 28th, uh, I had a sebaceous cyst in the back of my head and neck area. And uh, it erupted 
uh, in the middle of the night. And I got myself together and I got up the next morning and, and went to the hospital. I went to Christian Northwest uh, Emergency Room. Now, that's the one you can kind of get in and get out of uh, over on Graham Road. Uh, but then they sent me for a CAT scan and they say, well, you got to be admitted and we got to do surgery on you. Uh, they say, we got a room for you over at Christian Northeast. I said, no to, excuse me. I said, no, you, you ain't got no room for me at Northeast. Uh, uh, they said, ain't you, are you a pastor, aren't you? I said, yeah, but I'm Baptist. Send me to Missouri. <laughs> Do I have a witness? All right, Dr. Gara came in, they admitted me later that night. And Dr. Gara came in and said, we got to take you to surgery. Uh, and uh, uh, my chairman of my deacon, Deacon Clay, and, and Pastor Dwight Davis, and others came and they prayed for me. Look, even the woman that rolled my bed down to surgery, uh, she stopped before she got on the elevator, uh, and she prayed, yes, for me. Uh, do I have a witness? Uh, I went uh, into the operating room. Uh, they put me on the operating table uh, and told me to turn to my left side. Uh, the next thing I remember, uh, they were in, I was in recovery uh, and they were calling my name. Uh, and while they were calling my name, uh, I was calling his name. Uh, and I was telling him, thank you, Lord, uh, for all you've done for me. Uh, do I have a witness? Uh, I did not have uh, a lot of strength, uh, but I had enough strength uh, to call on his name. Uh, my pastor came to see me. Uh, he could tell you the hole in my head uh, was as big as my fist. Uh, you could have put your fist through the back of my head. Uh, they put a wound back on my head. Uh, do I have a witness? Uh, and I wore the wound back. Uh, I carried it around. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, but uh, after four weeks uh, and three days, uh, they were so amazed. Uh, they said, we're going to remove it. We don't remove wound vax this quick. Uh, and we're going to remove it. Uh, yes. Uh, and I went on. Uh, I wore a Band-Aid on the back of my head. Uh, yes, until last Tuesday. Do I have a witness? Uh, I'm... No Band-Aid. Uh, I got on the prayer call at True Light on Thursday. Uh, I said, I'm free. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm free. Uh, no longer bound. Uh, no more Band-Aids holding me. Uh, you ought to give God praise uh, when he love you enough. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, that uh, he will... Uh, look after you even when the chips look down even when you don't know what's going on I'm glad that Jesus the Christ loved us intentionally incessantly and instructionally ain't God alright but I'm going to tell you about my lot as I go to my seat I've seen Yes, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to ride no more. But the master of the sea, he heard, God bless you here, my despairing cry, and from the waters, he lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, come on, help me close. He died on Calvary's cross. They hung him high, stretched him wide, and he died. Didn't he do it? They put him in a borrowed tomb. He stayed in the grave all night Friday 
all day on Saturday, all night, Saturday night. But God bless you here. Sunday morning, he got up. Didn't he do it? Can I ask you the question that Pastor asked? Ain't he all right? I said, ain't he all right? Uh, <laughs> no, he's all right. Do you know he's all right? Yes, he's all right. Excuse me, so Sonny Mount. I know y'all don't like all this old country preaching, but every once in a while, when the fire start to burn on the inside, you got to tell him, thank you for loving me. Thank you for seeing about me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, hey. Come on, let's give God some praise all over the room. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Just look at somebody and tell them love one another, love one another, love. Love one another. Didn't this man preach in this room today? Thank God for Pastor Keith Pendleton. I think that's a timely word today. Love one another. Love one another. Love one another. Hallelujah. Thank you, man. Love one another. And he did it like only he can do it. Hallelujah. Is at this moment at our church, we do what we call open the doors of the church. And it's about extending an invitation. It's an invitation to a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you are here, you do not know that love personal way we extend an invitation to you to come to know how much God loves you to know how deep and wide is God's love if that's you just come on grab your things come on down some of you here you uh, want to unite with the church and we open uh, our arms our doors our relationship to you come 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 today we extend an invitation to you I need you. Then there may be those who stand you in need of prayer. We're all you can come today as well. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're you can come, you can come. Hallelujah. Praise God for this sister church. Come, 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 come. You are important to me. I need you to survive. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Hallelujah. I need you. 
this is Sister Candice, and she comes uh, for Christian Experience, uniting with New Sun and Mount Church. Let's praise God for it. Amen. They're going to touch and agree and pray with her. Point your hand this way, God, in the name of Jesus, touch. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank you. Thank God for this young lady who's come on today. Amen. The invitation is yet open. You can come. You can come. You can come. You can come. You can come right now. Amen. Amen. Come on, clap your hands all over the building. Clap your hands all over the room. We're going to turn toward communion. It's the first Sunday. We're grateful on this Lord's Day to share in fellowship together over this meal that we call Lord's Supper. Hallelujah. As we prepare the Word of God, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at verse number 23, reminds us, for I receive from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Same manner he also took the cup after supper, saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you today for these elements of bread and wine. We thank you today being a part of this fellowship, this body, this family. We're grateful today that we love you because you first loved us. Loved us with a sacrificial love where you gave your life that we might have eternal life. So bless these elements and our fellowship. Empower us to complete the work that you have begun in making all things new. We surrender ourselves as agents of change, as spreaders of your gospel, that this world might be somewhat better than we found it. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. If you are in need of communion, would you lift your hands? Amen, if you need, if you need. Amen. Everyone has been served. The night in which Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body which is broken for you. They took it and they ate together. Let us eat together.
They shared a cup at the table on that day. Jesus would say the wine therein would symbolize the blood that he would shed for the new covenant. Let us take and let us drink together. for what the Lord is doing in the life of our church. Again, we welcome you, our sister. Amen. Uh, we're grateful for how God is, is moving in such a mighty and a wonderful way. Uh, we're grateful for each of you, your commitment to uh, our vision, your commitment to growing together the grace and the love of God. We thank you for uh, your stewardship. Give yourselves a hand. Amen. We believe in tithe. We believe in offerings. And you all have been so generous in your giving. And we're grateful for your gifts and the wonderful things that the Lord is yet doing in the life of the church. Uh, it is at this time giving time. Cornell is going to give us our scripture and prayer. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on now. Praise the Lord, everybody. I mean, you act like God didn't do nothing for you. But all you got to do is inhale and exhale. That's enough to say, hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Our scripture comes from 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, and the sixth verse. And it simply reads, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Amen. Pray. Thank you, God, for being a great God. Yes. Thank you, God, for meeting our needs, God. Thank you, God, for being our source. Now, God, help us to give back to you because you loaned it to us and we want to be obedient and show the highest praise and give it back to you. This we ask in Jesus' name, amen. All right, as it is our custom, we have multiple ways of giving. And I say, however your heart feels, if you feel young at heart, text, go online, or if you feel seasoned like me, uh, just give in person or mail it. And then there's give no fi. But the key word is just give. Amen?
Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, creator of the ends of the earth, he fainteth not, neither is he weary. There's no searching for his understanding. He gives power to the weak and those who have no might, he increases strength. Even though you shall faint and be weary, and young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Go in peace, knowing the Lord will bless you and keep you, knowing the Lord will turn his face to you and be gracious to you, knowing the Lord will lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. We ask this in the only name that matters, and that's the name of Jesus Christ. Make sure to pray for us. We are praying for you. Go in peace.